I'm Tim. This is Rudy. Thank you, Rudy. Join me in this video as I take my <clears throat> original foam board Bronco with a 30 inch wingspan and make a smaller version, two thirds of the size. I'm calling my mini foam Bronco. So we'll go through how this is made and discuss its flight. Let's get to it. In this video, I'm going to take the uh, foam board Bronco, which I'll put a card up for, how, uh, for this aircraft, an incredibly well-flying um, aircraft. And what I did was I picked a 30-inch wingspan. I came up with 30 inches because that's the width of the foam board, and everything worked out just fine. But I'm so pleased with this aircraft. And the question always comes up, can you scale these aircraft? Can you make them larger or smaller? The answer is yes, any aircraft can. Some aircraft love themselves a lot better to scaling. I think the Bronco will be an ideal candidate to do that. So what I'm going to do is make another version of a foam board in this video, and we're going to make it two-thirds the size of this Bronco. So instead of a 30-inch wingspan, the wingspan will be about 20 inches, and we'll proportionally shrink everything down from there. So as a review, the foam board Bronco came from the OV-10 Bronco. It is a uh, military Marine Corps Air Force close observation aircraft and what I did was just for um, to play around instead of the two engines I just made the booms for the high distinctive high tail and put the motor in the front with the electronics in the cargo area. The CAD plans I drew up are here. Uh, the CAD plans will be available in the description. You can download them from Google Drive so you can print them out and there's a little scale here but you can make it any size you want. So for example, if you measure this out to be six inches and you want to make a uh, 15 inch Bronco, just multiply this by two and a half and you can scale everything up or go down to FedEx office and print a full size set of plans. Because this has a lot of straight lines, it's very easy just to multiply out the dimensions and draw it directly on the foam board. That's what I'll be doing with mine. For the control system, um, we have this motor here, and the motor doesn't even have a name. I got it from Stevens Arrow. The full description will be in the uh, description, but it's just a Park BL250 motor. And it, what it says is, ideal for sport models with a flying weight of 4 to 8 ounces. I think this will come out about that range. I very often use the weight of the aircraft to pick an appropriate motor, and we'll see how that works. We'll use a two-cell um, We'll use a two-cell uh, motor uh, battery with that. This will be the battery, uh, the smaller connectors. <clears throat> this is the motor, the Spectrum AR620 receiver, which I like a lot. Again, from Steve Zero, their smallest 10-amp electronic speed control, nice small controller. And um, the servos will be the uh, high-tech HS40 servos. And again, the model of the Bronco will be three channels. Um, it'll be throttle through the ESC, elevator, and ailerons. We're not going to have any rudder. There's really no need for a rudder on this. It flew fine with the ailerons. And I'm going to take my own advice. <clears throat> when I made the previous Bronco, I had two ailerons servos in the bottom. Okay. So what I'm going to do for this version is just put a single servo in here with two uh, wires and a two uh, um, control rods much like this for the ailerons and then a single servo to control the elevator uh, just like this and again I'll do the magnetic hatch as well. The other thing that I'm going to do as I design it, I, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet on this, is do I have one or two layers of foam board for the extensions. For this larger model you had to have two layers of foam just for the strength and all that. The smaller one, I may be able to get away with one, but if there's any doubt, I'll put on two just to give a little bit of extra rigidity. And the other thing I'm not sure is the length of the nose. I picked out four and a half inches from the leading edge here because um, <clears throat> what I did was I put a little dummy extension here with the battery I was going to use on the motor to make sure that it balanced at the center of gravity, which is 25% back from the leading edge of the wing. 
As these batteries and motors are a lot lighter, I may have to extend that or keep it back. The length of the nose really is not that important for flying characteristics. But if I can adjust that correctly to not have to add extra weight to achieve the center of gravity, that's just going to be a win all around. The other thing I have to do is make sure that I make the compartment big enough to house the battery and all the electronics. That shouldn't be hard to do, but that'll just be something that will uh, work as we build the airplane kind of design as we progress all along. So it should be fun. Uh, this flew really well. It came in at 1.2 pounds, and we'll see how we do with the um, smaller one and see how that flies. Here's the original 30-inch foam board Bronco, and the 20-inch wing has been drawn out onto the foam board with a fold line as well as spar placement. This is the glue gun we'll use to hold everything together. <clears throat> I've creased the fold point with the metal straight edge to facilitate folding it over. The next step will be to glue the spar into place on the bottom of the wing. The one inch spar is shown here. On, I had to adjust that actually three quarters of an inch back to fit a little bit better. And once the trailing edge is glued together, this is the finished wing. A uh, very strong wing, straight, warp free. And in the next video segment, we'll give you a quick overview of how to build one of these wings. So this is dried in place. We're going to fold it over. We'll draw a line along here, trim off this back edge, and then on the bottom of the wing, we'll bevel it so that you have a smoother transition and then glue everything in place and we'll be done. So here's the edge of the wing. We'll draw a line just like this. And then with the sanding block, it's important to use a sanding block. Don't use your hand. This is 100 grit. That works about right. And you can see the bevel on the side, probably about a half inch in. And when we put that together, you get a nice clean edge. Now when you glue this in place, try to keep the glue on the inside. If the glue, if there's too much glue and it squirts out, it's going to make it very hard to sand the trailing edge because you're going to be trying to sand the very soft foam with the hard glue and it just won't work out well. So we'll put a little bit of glue on top here, a little bit, bit, bit of glue along here, and that will be the wing. These are the two foam tail booms cut out. I elected to use single foam for each tail boom, strong enough for this smaller model. This is an update on progress with the Mini uh, Bronco. This is the original one with a 30 inch wingspan. This one is 20 inch wingspan. I was kicking around maybe doing a half size, but with look at the motor and the battery, I think that would be a little bit small, so we'll try the two thirds size one. Uh, some changes. Uh, this one was two layers of foam. This is small enough. I can get away with one layer of foam, I'm pretty sure. The ailerons are located here. I did want to point out that with the original Bronco, the spar is two layers of foam. That works out about right, and it's an inch back. This smaller wingspan, I decided to go with one spar and move it a little bit closer. It's three quarters of an inch back. I think that's better for the airfoil shape. The other thing I want to point out with all the control surfaces, the elevator, the ailerons, I put a little bevel. Uh, 45 degree bevel so that the ALR can go down and I think that is okay. So it's a nice strong little wing, not too heavy. The next thing will be putting on the hatch servos for the rudder and ailerons and then I'll have to determine the nose length because I'll take the battery and the motor and just take a piece of scrap foam to extend it out to see how long the nose has to be <clears throat> to balance the airplane at the center of gravity, which will be about 25% back from the leading edge of the wing. So the length of the nose can be varied to do that. So that'll be today's project. This is a scrap foam extender I use to determine the length of the nose for center of gravity with the motor and the battery. And this is a completed nose. You can see the motor screwed into place with the electronics receiver and the ailerons of the elevator servo in place with the tubes to the ailerons. I've completed the Mini Bronco. Here's the original Bronco, 30 inch wingspan. This is a one third smaller one with a 20 inch wingspan right here. So we'll put this off to the side. I'm happy the way this came out. The uh, weight is 6.2 ounces, which is good. You see you've got a little 
compartment here with the receiver the battery goes in like this the motor I put these cables for the ailerons that go under here to the control horns and Monaco trim I'll put a card up for the Monaco trim works fine for the checkers and the blue just to experiment with some that I had lying around so this is a completed mini Bronco once we get some decent weather, head up to Vinefield and we'll take it for a test flight. When you design an RC model airplane, um, you can either do it when you're drawing up the plans, which I typically do with a lot of thinking on balsa wood models because it's harder to change. But with other, other designs, like with foam board, because it builds so quickly, sometimes you're making design changes as you build it. And I was thinking about <clears throat> my Mini Bronco last night. And I just wasn't satisfied with the nature of the aileron control with the tubes. They were just too much um, tighter radius bend they were binding a little bit and then I realized that I just did it completely wrong so let's take a look at how I did it before so what I decided last night was a much better way would be to take the servo I kept the same servo for the ailerons here instead of the tubes sneak out, snaking out here through here to controls on the bottom which is just ridiculous if anything when those tubes came out they should have just stayed on top of the wing and gone to the control horns on the top what I elected to do was to put the control music wire straight from the servo arm to the uh, control arm on top on either aileron this is a standard overlap technique the shrink uh, heat shrink tubing to keep it aligned and this way it's a much better direct connection notice the control horns are tilt it in a little bit to keep it a straight line I just cut away to get that adjusted so that's that we'll watch it in operation in a second if I were to build another one of these I really think after having gone through all this it's a better idea just to put the servos on top of the wing to the control horns here and have the wire you can even plan ahead to put it inside the wing when you make it to come out here to the reservo so two little servos out here uh, connected to the receiver so let's power it up we'll take a quick look Oh, and by the way, in this um, Stevens Aero A20 engine, which I like a lot, they recommend a 7 by 3.5 prop, 3 prop, which I put on, and we'll see that it provides plenty of thrust. So let's look at the elevator. Up, down, that should be plenty. And now for the ailerons. That's a nice, clean connection, plenty of elevator throw. And I'm happy with that. And for the throttle, it's just amazing how much power that puts out. So uh, we're all done. Um, just wait for some good weather, go out to the field for a test flight. We're at the field, very nice day for flying. A little bit chilly, but that's okay. And we'll do a test flight of the Mini Bronco now. Just completed the test flight of the Mini Bronco, very happy with how it flew. And it's a little, little bit twitchy at first. You saw the first flight, 
And what I did was I turned down the aileron throw from 100% to 75%. I just had a little bit too much aileron throw and it made it a lot uh, smoother to fly. I think I probably need to add just a little bit more down thrust when I was applying power to kind of hunt up with the nose. Uh, but other than that, very pleased with the way it flies. It's a nice little airplane, um, very maneuverable, and good luck if you want to build one. Plans are, uh, you can download them from the description. As we discussed, we had the test flight of the Mini Bronco today. I was very happy with the way it flew. The nose tended to raise when I added power. That's an indication I need a little bit more down thrust, so I think um, I'll put a little bit more down thrust. It's pretty much zero, zero for this one. It's a good starting point to have a little bit of down thrust, a little bit of right thrust. It, the plane was a little bit sensitive at pitch, and so what helps on that is to simply make the tail a little bit longer so the elevator and the stabilizer is a little bit further back. Very easy to do the full board, just maybe extend it out an inch or two. I think that will help. And the other thing is the motor has absolutely gobs of power. I'm very, very happy with this little motor. It's a seven by three prop, just all kinds of power you can see, which is nice to have. I think this might be another useful candidate for Guilo's flight. So again, a nice model, uh, fun to fly, happy we put it together. The ailerons all worked out well, and um, it's a good project for your building. Good luck.